Well, phase two of President Biden's border invasion has begun. Phase two. What is phase two? Well, let's listen to an integration specialist from the Catholic Charities explain how phase two has just begun. Listen. I'm Claire Roining, the Refugee Integration Specialist at Catholic Charities Milwaukee. Welcome Corps is a private refugee resettlement sponsorship program that allows private sponsors who are U.S. citizens or green card holders to help refugees who are in other countries to enter the United States through the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program. Now that the program has reached phase two, we may begin working on our applications to sponsor our friends and family. So what in the world is going on here? And who are, what is the Catholic Charities? How are they integrating and bringing in illegal aliens into the United States with the backing of the, the Biden administration? What is actually happening here right under our noses? Let's bring in J.J. Carroll. He's the author of Invaded, of course, veteran of the Customs and Border Patrol for many, many years as a supervisor, has written an amazing book on this. And I have to say, J.J., when... You sent me this information, I was just blown away. And I think Americans have no idea what's happening. So first of all, let's start at the, st at the start of this. What is phase two of this entire border invasion process? Okay, thank, first off, thanks for having me back on. And phase two, I've witnessed this throughout my career, not to the, the, the level that it's happening now. I could never imagine what they're doing, but I watched this phase system come through. Phase one flood the system with millions of illegal aliens. Throughout my career, I saw this happening. Phase two is allowing permanent resident aliens called lappers or people with green cards and United States citizens to sponsor illegal immigrants from foreign nations into America. But the arrogance of this administration working through the NGOs have spilled the beans, if you will. Nobody knows there's phases unless you were inside the belly of the beast and watched it through your career. Phase one, millions of people coming into America illegally. Phase one doesn't end, mind you. It just continues on. But phase two is bringing more foreign nationals into the America under the guise of being sponsored. And to understand what sponsorship is, if I'm a, natural, I'm a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, I'm allowed to sponsor my family members to come into America, which is great. If I'm married to someone, say, from the Philippines and I want to bring them in legally, that's, there's a process for that. Or I'm a lapper and I want to do that. I have no problem with that. However, what the Biden, Biden administration has done through Mayorkas and the U.S. Uh, Citizenship and Immigration Service, UC, USCIS, has done is they've labeled all of the millions of people that have been paroled in as legal residents, lawfully permanent residents. So now they bestowed that title, which is they, they're illegal aliens. You can call them parole, asylum, whatever. When these individuals come in, Clayton, they get about 60 to 90 days to see an immigration inspector or immigration judge. They can't see an immigration judge in New York City to 2032. California is 2027 and beyond. They're never going to see an immigration judge, so they go out of status and thus become illegal aliens. So the USCIS has bestowed legal resident status on illegal aliens, so now illegal aliens can sponsor their family members to come into America. So they're getting so illegal immigrants now have legal authority to sponsor other illegal immigrants, even though they're not here they're not here legally and they're still awaiting even seeing an immigration judge, which is pushed off by 10, 15, 20 years because they're all backed up so much that they can't do it. Correct. That's absolutely correct. So the Center for Immigration Studies, CIS.org, one of their investigative journalists named Nyla Rush did an article on this, and I agree with her completely because I've seen the stats. I know what's happening. So Biden administration has taken the countries of Cuba, then, uh, Cuba, Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua and Venezuela, and they shortened the term down to CHNVs, okay? They are now saying that those individuals from those countries that have been paroled into America are now legal residents and can bring all their family members in just from those nations. However, there's a cutout that says those illegal aliens from those CHNVs can 
can sponsor people or family members despite them being from those from other nations. Meaning, if I'm from Venezuela, but my family members from Iran, I can bring that person in from Iran. I'm not subject to that. What's even even more malicious is the U USCIS has now designated temporary protective status TPS DACA recipients and deferred enforced deportation, which is DED. Those people under those blankets, those are all temporary. 18 months, you can stay in America. They've deemed them as legal residents as well. Why? Let me give you an example how devious this is. Two weeks ago, President Biden did an executive order and gave deferred enforced deportation coverage to 6,000 Palestinian illegal aliens. 6,000 illegal aliens from Palestine here in America now are forbidden from being deported. They cannot be through deportations. Those 6,000 can now petition for all their family members living in the Gaza and in Palestine into America. So what you're saying here is that all of these American, or all of these now parolees can, uh, can sponsor up to four illegal I immigrants per people. So if we're talking 10 million people have come into the United States, and I know your numbers in the book, I mean, it's just staggering how many people are already here. That basically could add an additional 40 million people into the United States. Yes, but, but let's let, hold on one second, just so you understand. I, in the old system, if I wanted to sponsor someone, I had to fill out a government form I 134. It's a declaration of financial support. So I could only maybe bring in one person, maybe my father, my brother, because I only had the financial support to bring in one person. Well, DHS now said, hey, you don't have to provide that form anymore because the first question people should ask is, how is an illegal alien from Sudan that's living in the uh, detention facility or a hotel of Comfort Inn in Boston, Mass., how are they going to provide support for family members? Well, the DHS now claims that, Nash that all the NGOs, starting with Nash Catholic Charities, they can be the sponsors. The financial sponsors. So instead of bringing just my brother over, I can bring my father, my mother, my brother and sister. I can bring their children. I can bring their spouses. I can bring grandma and grandpa because there's no limitation on my financial support. The NGOs are now the backstop for that. So I was going to ask you how the Catholic Charities fits into this. So these NGOs are being paid for by the Biden administration in order to facilitate this. They're making enormous amounts of money. And this is how the Biden administration gets away with it, right? They can pass it off to non-government organizations. So it's not the Biden administration. Yes. It's these, it's these uh, you know, private organizations. It's these 503C whatever, you know, charities, et cetera. And yep. by all accounts, they're supposed to be doing great work. Catholic Charities, that sounds like a great thing. So who is the Catholic Charities? What do they do? Catholic Charities goes, they are not affiliated, they say, with Catholic Church, but I'm a Catholic and I'm very aware Catholic Charities is tied at the hip with the Catholic Church. They are a nonprofit refugee resettlement group. That's probably, if I had to say, their main thrust in their, their charitable, charitable work is they re resettle refugees. Now, that's not refugees like you and I think about back in the day, like people from Cambodia. We're talking about anyone that's illegal is considered a refugee. Let me explain how much money. Since 15 years prior to uh, Biden taking office, Catholic Charities have received $3.5 billion from the U.S. government. $3.5 billion. Estimates now say between by the time Joe Biden took office to now that they've received another $3 billion. So we're at we're, we're encroaching on seven billion dollars. So when I tell you that the NGOs, be it United Way, Jewish Family Service, Lutheran Family Services, and all the hundreds of mom and pops, like literally mom and pops, we're paying taxpayer money to the NGOs. The NGOs are now using that money to bring illegal aliens into our country that are sponsored by them. By Catholic Charities becomes the sponsor of millions. So Clayton, so your audience understands. So I bring in my father, my mother, my brother and sister. Well, once the once they get in, they turn around and they say, well, I need my spouse and my kids. And I need my grandma and grandpa. 
I need X, I need my aunts and uncles. So that one, two, three, four turns in to 10, 15, 20 relatives. And here's another sick thing that you need to understand. Well, I'd like you to understand. I worked 24 years in the Border Patrol. I have Social Security. You're a working man. You're pouring into Social Security. You got truckers, 30 years, construction workers, nurses, stockbrokers, whatever. When I bring in my illegal alien grandma that's never, never worked a day in her life, do you know that she gets the maximum Social Security benefit payout? What? So she'll get more money than me? Yes. What? Absolutely. So when we're doing coal, the cost of living increases for our grandmas and grandpas that are living paycheck to paycheck, and we're giving them a coal increase of one and a half percent or zero percent. The illegal alien grandma from Sudan and Mexico, wherever in the in the on the planet Earth, she gets more money than the person How? that's worked her whole life. I mean, this is infuriating. I mean, and and d is she given a social security number? How is this possible? Yes, they all get social security numbers because once they come in, they become legal residents. They will get a social security number. They can work, and you say, well. I want them to work. Well, yeah, I want them to work too, but let's take an example from the little town in Iowa two weeks ago that is 8,000 residents, 1,200 of those residents work at Tyson's meatpacking plant. They got fired and Tyson meatpacking plant replaced all 1,200 with refugees. Jeez. So that small town has been devastated, will never recover. But this is getting... the world we live in, Clayton. It is insanity what's happened. But you go back to the phases, just so we're clear, once phase two gets fully implemented, so you have phase one and phase two, they are going, those phases are never gonna stop. They're gonna continue. Phase three, and you're gonna start to hear it real soon, is the drumbeat, coordinated drumbeat between Republicans, Democrats, and the media. The system is broken, the system is broken, we need amnesty. The fourth phase is amnesty, and it's not do we have amnesty, it's how many tens of millions do we give amnesty to? Then it's over. Then it's over. Game because over. they can say they can say we just don't have the we don't have the agents, we don't have the ICE agents, we don't have the people to go out and arrest all of these individuals and deport them anymore. And we're just we're so overwhelmed. The only response is to start fresh. The system is broken, just amnesty, blanket amnesty for 50 million people who've come from around the world. Absolutely. And you say, well, that's theoretical. No, it's not. We go back to President Reagan. The exact same thing happened under President Reagan when he gave amnesty. The same thing. The system's broken. We're overwhelmed. We'll never be able to find all these people. And they were talking about 2 million. They weren't talking about 40, 50 million people. No, and you talk about in your book, I want everyone, again, read JJ's book. It's called Invaded. Uh, I'm on chapter four right now of the book. Natalie just finished it. And I was blown away. I mean, chapter three, I was pulling my hair out. I mean, thinking about what the Obama years did, I, I couldn't believe it. And how much they just opened up the floodgates and were giving this sort of new parole status to individuals. Um, but I guess what I want to say about that is, is that the amount of resources that are being taken away from the Border Patrol on purpose, like it's all engineered that way. And then of course, President Trump comes in, issues a number of executive orders. Suddenly the border patrol, you guys are, oh my God, this is amazing. We now have the resources. We close down the border. All the people coming across are being arrested and turned back to their countries. The, the, the home countries themselves are also now, because of under threat of us pulling up foreign aid against these countries, are now taking these individuals back and standing up their own border protection to make sure that they're not leaving. And on top of that, ICE is able to go out and do deportation flights, as you catalog in your book. So ICE was on a regularly going door to door, finding these individuals and flying them back to their home country. Criminals, you name it, get them out of here. And so this argument that we can't do it is total garbage. We've done it. We know we can do it. If we just put the resources in place, you say we're spending $3 billion on Catholic charities. President Trump asked for $15 billion for a border wall. Congress gave him $5 billion, but we've now spent $6 billion on Catholic charities to bring people into the United States. It's insanity. So I guess my point is, you point out in your book, it's a uniparty. Republicans and Democrats, and that's what we're about to see in phase four. They're coming together. They both want illegal immigration in this country. They, the dirty secret, 
as I've spoken to many of these individuals, the dirty secret on the Republican side is just what we saw with Tyson is we're going to fire people that we have to pay higher wages to, Americans. We're going to replace them with illegal aliens. And then if ICE comes in and arrests them, the dirty little secret, we saw this at, we saw this at chicken plants in Georgia, over the, I've covered this yep. for years, is that ICE will come in. There's a, a sort of a, a relationship here. ICE will come in and arrest a group of them, send them back, and then another batch will just come in and they'll replace them. And these Republican donors make a lot of money funding, you know, they, well, they send a lot of money to these Republican candidates. So it's Democrats and Republicans that are responsible for this. It's a uniparty, isn't it? It is absolutely uniparty. And just to give you an example, what happened this past weekend, Clayton, the $1.2 trillion budget was passed right. with no money, no money to the border. However, I'm going to read you these countries, Jordan, Lebanon, Egypt, Tunisia, and Oman. They received, starting out, this is all what we know, Yao. They've been given $380 million to do what in those five countries? To secure their borders. <laughs> It just, if it wasn't, I, I, these people make me disgusted. They, they're, they're traitors. You got Speaker Johnson has not done anything to shut the border down. I don't know if you saw in El Paso, National Guard got overrun by 300 yeah. single adult military age men. Our military got overrun. Let that sink in for a second. And tell me where in American history have American military ever been overrun and there was no reaction, none. Just let them come in. And this is in the great, the great state of Texas under the great border governor Abbott, who does everything half-assed. And you're right, this is a uniparty. And let's talk about this. Mayorkas was voted by like one person to be, to be impeached. Where's the impeachment? We haven't even heard about it. We're being invaded at a clip of approximately seven to 15,000 illegal aliens every single day, and not one politician is stopping it. it. It's unconscionable. But once you realize, Clayton, and I have to do this because it gets so upset and you get so frustrated, but once you put on the glasses of a traitor, of someone that hates the country, everything that you're seeing and witnessing makes sense. It's clear as day. All of these decisions they make that they make aligns perfectly with the destruction of America. And there is no argument if that's happening or not. It is happening. You're working on a new documentary called Treason. And I want to give a shout out here because you're trying to put this documentary together about Biden's open borders. And I'd love for you to tell our audience about it and how people can contribute. You guys have set up a, uh, a give, send, go um, link. We'll link it up in the description here. So if people want to contribute to to get this documentary made and pushed out there before the election um, in 2024, um, they can do that. So we'll link that up. So tell us about treason. Well, first off, thanks for for bringing that up. And because I'm very, very excited, very passionate about this project. We look at the border through the lens of looking south all the time. All we get is pictures of people bonsai the border, uh, the trash. I want to show that. I want to see that. But I want to, if you can envision, I want to turn the camera north. And I want to ask the question, what we just saw behind us is treason. I'm now going to take you into America, the big cities, Chicago, New York, D.C., Oakland, San Francisco. But I'm also going to take you in to Whitewater, Wisconsin. I'm going to take you into a small town in Iowa. I'm going to take you down into Alabama, and I'm going to show you what treason looks like. What is the manifestation in crime, in jobs, in social decay, in, in, in social benefit decay? I want you to see what treason is, and I'm going to be interviewing. I have interviews lined up out for the whole summer. I'm talking to chiefs of police in local small towns. I'm talking to to city activists that I would have nothing in common with politically. Now we are completely aligned. They've seen their communities devastated by illegal aliens and all of the funds going there. So over the summer, we have it lined out. We have a very packed production schedule, but it will end and we will release this in October before the election. Because I think it is paramount that Americans understand, instead of looking south all the time, Turn around and see what's happening to your country. What does this treason 
look like in the manifestation of crime and destruction. And it will be shocking to the American people to see their American brothers and sisters being turned away from, from homeless shelters, being turned away because there's no more money, losing their jobs that they belong to and have done for 20, 25 years to an illegal alien from Ecuador by the thousands. So that is what we're gonna do. We have a, a tight budget schedule, a tight budget. So we are going to, to Give, Send, Go and just go to Give, Send, Go. The link will be available. I appreciate you doing that, Clayton. And it's gonna be a powerful, it's gonna be artistically beautiful, but it's gonna be a powerful message of what does America look like and where are we hurtling to? Well, I encourage all of our audience to go there. We'll, we'll link it up in the description to, um, to be able to visit there and uh, to, you know, just if you've got five dollars laying around, I mean, I'm sure people have like five dollars in their seat, the couch cushions they might not know about, you know, just to give five dollars or a few bucks here or 20 bucks, whatever it is to this uh, to this uh, uh, this give, send, go account to help get this documentary made. Um, our audience is amazing. And uh, I think this could really hopefully help the election um, open up Americans eyes to what's actually happening out there um, to to our beautiful country right now. So we'll link that up and encourage everyone to check it out if they want to donate and be a part of that. Uh, JJ, as always, great to see you. This is unbelievable. Again, entering phase two right now, and you heard it here, phase phase three and four amnesty in the United States for the tens of millions of, of illegal aliens unless we put a stop to this right now. JJ, great to see you. Thank you so much for opening our eyes. Thank you, Clayton. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.